Hi everybody, it's Doreen and I'm back today with an Easter card that I made for my son. Every year when my son was real little, I would make him an Easter basket and put jelly beans, dyed eggs, and a chocolate bunny in it. And my mother would always send him a chocolate bunny. Well, last year I decided because he mentioned that he missed the tradition of getting the chocolate bunny from me and from my mother, I decided to send him a chocolate bunny and a card with a bunny on the front for Easter. So in keeping with the tradition, I decided this time I would send him a card with an Easter basket on it and I'll be sending him a chocolate bunny. So come on and join me and see how I made this card. Okay, everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up my supplies so I can show you how I made this card. Now, the first thing is my card itself measures 10 and a half by 5 and a quarter, and then I've scored it in half to make it a 5 and a quarter by 5 and a quarter inch card. And this cardstock is some basil cardstock that I picked up at Michael's. And I've already went ahead and inked my edges using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. And this is the vintage photo. So now what I want to go ahead and do is add my top layer. And my top layer measures 5 by 5. And I've taken it and ran it through my Big Shot using my Cuddlebug folder, the Swiss Dots. And I've also went ahead and inked the edges using the Vintage Photo. So let's go ahead and add this to the card. And I'm going to use my um, ATG gun to do that because this is some pretty heavy um, card stock. And I want to make sure that it stays down. So rather than using my Tombow adhesive, I'm going to use the um, ATG gun. So then I'm going to go ahead and lay it down like so. And because I'm not putting any ribbon on here, I remembered that this time. That I could go ahead and lay my top layer down. I'm going to put a note to myself when I know I want to add ribbon and I'm putting on a top layer. I'm going to put a big note. Don't forget to add the ribbon because I seem to forget that sometimes. So now the next thing I want to go ahead and add is we're going to start adding our embellishments. Now what I've done is I've taken my gypsy and cut out this basket. Now to make the basket, I first cut the basket out and I used the Doodle Charms cartridge. And the basket is on page 89 and I cut it out in the blackout feature. And this one is cut at 4 inches. And I cut out three of the basket because I wanted it to be really thick and heavy. So I'm going to show you which key that is on the gypsy. That is key number eight. And it's the blackout feature. So what you'll have to do is hit your blackout and then go to key number eight, which is right here. And the basket looks like this. So as I said before, I cut four of those out, or three of those, and then I glued them all together. And then, once they were all glued together, I wanted it to look like an actual basket. So I was watching Kathy from Paper Phenomenon's Ustream channel, where she was given a class on making a Easter basket 
and I'll put the link down below to her Ustream class. So what I did was I just took and did the basket weaving and then after I did some basket weaving, I then took and laid out the three baskets that I had cut from the Doodle Charms cartridge that were glued together. I turned them face down and I went along and trimmed out from the basket weaving so that it would end up looking like an actual basket. And I'll get um, some of that. I think I have a little bit left. Let me get that. Okay, so now what it is is on Kathy's um, U-string class, she cut out one inch strips. And you basically just lay them down and put one on top of the other. And then you just go in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm not going to go and do a whole one. Because it, it's very time consuming. So basically, you have them laid across. And then your next one would go over, over this one and under this one. And I used a glue gun to tack them down as I was doing it. But like I said, if you go to her Ustream channel, you can see how she's um, done this. And she's made one, took twelve, a 12-inch... 12 two 12 inch sheets of cardstock and cut one inch strips and then just weaved a piece and then you can go in and lay down what you want to be your basket weave and just cut it out. So this is just a piece that I had left over after I cut the basket like so and then I just cut that part out. So let's go ahead and Lay this down. Now, I did my strips um, half an inch rather than an inch. So, I've popped this up uh, with some foam tape. And I want to put it right here. So, let's go ahead and lay that down. And I've also inked the edges. And I have two thickness of, of foam tape on the back. And I inked the edges with the vintage photo again. And I'm going to go ahead... And lay it down right here. Like so. So now, the next thing that I did was, I went ahead and I cut out these little eggs. I've cut four of them. And then I've added some glossy accents to each one of them. Now, the eggs are from the... Happy Easter 2010 cartridge. And I just went ahead and they look like this on, on the overlay. There is no handbook. So I cut out from key number 19. And I've cut four of those. And then I also cut out this little bunny. And... That is key number 30. Let me show you what that looks like. And I believe I cut that at one inches. No, I cut that at one and three quarter inches. The eggs were cut at one inch. So let me bring up the Easter 2010 on my gypsy so you can see what that looks like. So it's this egg right here. Oh, nope, wrong one. Number 19, I hit key number 18. So it looks like that. And that's cut at one inch. And the bunny, I cut one out in brown, like so. And that was on key number 30. And then I cut another layer which would be the pink layer, and that's key number 40 at one and three quarter inches. So I think what I want to do is go ahead and I want to add the bunny first, and I'm just going to sit the bunny down inside right in the center. 
so it looks like the bunny is sitting in the Easter basket. And I'm not going to pop this one up. Or maybe I will. No, I think I'm not going to pop it up because I've got the Easter basket popped up. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my two-way Zig pen and get some glue on there. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm just going to actually put them up here and I'm just going to sit them right there in the center and lay it down. Okay, so now the next thing, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the eggs. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the two-way zig pen to add the eggs. And I want to put one right over here in the corner. Like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and add another one. Just a little bit higher up. About right there. Using my two-way zig pen again. Now even though my son is, a, is in his 20s now. He still misses getting an Easter basket every year. Because I always used to make an Easter basket for him. And my mother would always send him a chocolate bunny. So when he got to be a teenager, we both stopped giving him the Easter baskets and the chocolate bunnies. And he always wanted to know why, because he considered that to be a tradition. So, I can't send him an Easter basket because he doesn't live here. But, oh, well, actually I can't send him a real Easter basket. But I thought I could still send him this. To let him know that the tradition is still somewhat there. So I'm going to put this one right here. And then I've also bought him a chocolate bunny like um, I did last year. Because he said that. He misses getting those um, chocolate bunnies, even though he, he never eats them. It's just the thought of the tradition that he always got one from myself and from my mother. So let's put this last egg in. And I'm just going to slide this one. I think I want to put this one further down. And over just a little bit. There. So now the last thing I want to do for the front of the card is I want to go ahead and add my Happy Easter. And I'm going to lay that right at the top of the basket. Like so. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. I'm going to put it right there. Now, the Happy Easter is also from the um, Easter 2010 cartridge. And it is key number one. And it looks like this. So I've cut that out in the blue. And then right below that is the shadow. And that was cut at one inch. So I've already popped it up with some foam tape. So I just need to go ahead and pull my tape off and then we can add that. And this is actually some different foam tape. I bought this at a um, craft fair that I went to and I for actually forgot that I had it. And it's just little thin strips, and it's actually clear. So.
So I'm going to put that right there. So that's the front of our card. Now let's go ahead and put in our sentiment. The sentiment that I have is I got this out of that ultimate guide to the perfect card and it just I printed it out on my computer and this font is Missy I'll have to check I'm not positive what that font is I'll I'll include that in the video but I do know I believe it is 20 point and then I took a rubber stamp that I had and it's actually one of those Studio G stamps that was in the dollar bin at Michael's. And it's two separate stamps. One of the stamps has Easter and the two eggs. And then one of them has the word eggs and two flowers. And I just took my new tool that I have that looks like this to put everything together. And I just laid it out, and then I, I put the stamps on and inked them, and then I just pressed down, like so. So I was able to get everything all on at once, and I didn't have to use the stamp -a jig That doesn't mean that I still won't use my stamp -a jig because I do like that as well. And I'll probably use that when I have smaller items that I need to put, or rubber stamp. But because this was such a big thing and I didn't want to stamp each thing separately or use the stamp on my jig because I didn't think it was going to all fit on the stamp on my jig. I now have that other tool to use to put down um, my clear block, my clear stamps. The other thing, now I stamped this all out using the Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, but then after I stamped it out, I took my Yasutomo watercolor paints and those look like this I took those and I painted the eggs so now I don't know if the camera will pick it up but they're real shiny like so so then I also took my we are memory corner chopper and I used the scallop edge to go ahead and put round my um, corners. So now, I want to go over how to use this thing. When I first got it, I thought, this thing doesn't work. <laughs> I'm taking it back. And I was about to do that, but I kept looking at it, and I thought, well, there's got to be a way to make this thing work. And then I realized, just with playing around with it, that in order to make it work, you have to pop it open to slide your paper in. So I haven't done this one corner. So all you do is slide your paper in, and then you just squeeze. And there you have it. So remember, when you first buy it, it does come like this, and you do have to open it up. And then to empty it out, you just lift the top up and then just empty it out and then close it back. So now let's go ahead and add the sentiment. And this is just some copy paper or printer paper that I had. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. And I probably could use the Tombow adhesive since this paper is so thin, but. Since I have my ATG gun out and in my hand, I might as well use it. Oops, we're on this side. So now we'll just go ahead and lay this down. And I have inked the edges using the vintage photo again. So there is my Easter card for my son. Oh, and it looks like one of my eggs came off. So, we may have to add 
a little bit more of the two-way zig pin and we'll just slide it back in there and push down to make sure it's adhered so that's it everybody thanks for watching bye